name's Chuck Cudick, uh, owner and operator along with my wife Karen of Cudick's Honey Farm LLC. We're state, um, we're out of New York State, Central New York. Uh, we winter our bees in South Carolina. We do pollination in uh, almonds in California, blueberries in North Carolina, blueberries in Maine, apples in New York State. And we also sell nukes to uh, wholesale and retail in uh, Queens, and we pack some honey. Um, I've been, uh, I think, a member of American Honey Producers since, oh, probably going on 18 years. I've uh, been on the board for four years, and uh, always looked at American Honey Producers as an organization of not just honey producers, but beekeepers that were involved in pollination in Queens that uh, was trying to do the most to protect bees and markets. Um, trying to keep honey prices up and uh, protect us with uh, a lot of legislative things as uh, trucking and, and all the other issues that we face. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that uh, impressed me as to how fast uh, they'll, the American Honey Producers Associate will, will, will respond to issues is uh, we found out that there was a 60-day comment period available for the release of a biological control on Japanese knotweed. Uh, within three days, we had organized enough resistance and enough uh, comments that APHIS um, backed off and gave us another 30 days to respond. And uh, from what I understand, that's, that's a pretty amazing thing to accomplish with APHIS. Um, we're working, uh, American Honey Producers is working a lot on uh, biological controls of uh, invasive species. Uh, everybody thinks invasive species are bad, but uh, if you're a beekeeper, a lot of the honey that we produce comes off of invasive species. Uh, the new push is to release biological controls on these, and uh, you don't know what's gonna, what that biological control is gonna do uh, when they release it. There's been a lot of biological controls that end up being worse than the uh, than what they're trying to save. Um, an example would be they released biological control on uh, purple loosestrife in New York and it basically took away all the purple loosestrife in New York which was a major nectar producing plant in August in New York State. Uh, the hopes was that they were trying to return cattails uh, that uh, loosestrife was supposedly pushing it out. Um, they did, they were very successful in removing the loose stripe, but instead of cattails coming back, what, what came back was, what replaced that was Phragumites, which is a, an invasive reed, grass, tall grass, and uh, they never got the cattails back. So they accomplished what they, they, they went out to do was to kill the loose stripe, but the result was not what they wanted. So. Um, you don't always get what you want when you release biological control. So uh, the honey producers are working very stringently on uh, watching and uh, commenting and uh, fighting these biological controls on uh, invasive species that are our major honey nectar producing plants. We're, we're not against the control of those plants, but just through biological controls. So if, if people want to spray, or you know, cut them down or whatever, cultivate, that's one thing. But to release a biological control, uh, we're against that. So uh, that's one area right now that uh, seems to be a new battle that we need to, to fight. And the honey producers are right there doing it. One thing I would plead and ask uh, young beekeepers to uh, to join the American Honey Producers. Uh, we, we work very hard for beekeepers and for the industry. Uh, we need young blood, we need guys that have energy. Um, a lot of the big beekeeping operations, uh, the owners are getting older and older and we need young blood that uh, is gonna come in and take over. So we just ask that uh, any beekeepers that are young and, and see a future in beekeeping would join uh, American Honey Producers and. Uh, help us move the industry forward in the years to come.